We expect a lot from our homes. They're more than a place to hang your hat. They're where you try your hand at gardening and new recipes, where you rest and recharge, where you work and play. And that's why at Home Advisor, we're committed to keeping your home up and running. Whether you need to repair an overloaded appliance or you're looking to create a backyard retreat worthy of a summer staycation, use the Home Advisor app day or night and we'll find a local pro to get the job done right. Whatever you need, we'll do everything to fix your, well, everything. Download the Home Advisor app to get started. This is CNN Breaking News. Welcome to The Lead. I'm Jake Tapper, and we begin today with breaking news in our national lead. Former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin is now in custody and is being charged with third-degree murder and manslaughter for the killing of George Floyd. Chauvin was the officer who kneeled on the neck of Floyd, an unarmed black man, for more than eight minutes as Floyd begged that he could not breathe soon after Floyd obviously had been killed. The charging documents spelling out that Floyd was non-responsive for almost three minutes before Chauvin removed his knee from Floyd's neck. The prosecutor in the case also saying that he anticipates charges for the other police officers involved. This comes as new video of the incident has emerged. And I want to warn our viewers, this video is graphic. It appears to start earlier than the video many of us have previously seen Um, You can see in the video that it looks as though three officers are holding Floyd down, not just Officer Chauvin. Uh, CNN has reached out to the Minneapolis Police Department and the Floyd family about the video. We have not yet received uh, a response. We will bring that to you when we get one. Uh, Let's go straight now to CNN. Sarah Seidner, she's live for us in Minneapolis. And Sarah, we're learning more about what happened from the charging document. Uh, Tell us more. Yeah. Look, you had mentioned it, and I just want to kind of go through a bit of it for you uh, right now, Jake. The new details that we're seeing uh, from these charging documents, but these you could count out yourself. It says that the defendant had his knee, and that's the defendant, the police officer who was fired, Derek Chauvin, on Mr. Flo's neck, eight minutes and 46 seconds. For a full two minutes and 53 seconds, Mr. Floyd was unresponsive, and the officer had his knee on his neck that entire time. The charging documents also reveal uh, what the medical examiner has so far determined, although the autopsy is not finished. He has said, and this is something that the defense will likely seize on, that there is no indication that Floyd died of intoxic- or, sorry, of asphyxiation or strangulation. So no indication of asphyxiation or strangulation causing his death, but... And this is important. The combined effects of Mr. Floyd being restrained by police, his underlying health conditions, and he's putting any potential intoxicants in his system is likely the contributor to Mr. Floyd's death. No justice. No peace. No justice. No peace. Calls for justice continuing today in Minneapolis as Derek Chauvin, the officer seen here kneeling on George Floyd's neck, is accused of third-degree murder. Has been charged by the Hennepin County Attorney's Office with murder and with manslaughter. This is by far the fastest we've ever charged a police officer. Prosecutors say the other officers involved are also under investigation and will likely face charges soon. This after overnight protests left the police precinct, the neighborhood, and parts of downtown in ruins. Your pain is real. The chapter that's been written this week is one of our darkest chapters. Minnesota Governor Tim Waltz now vowing solidarity. The ashes are symbolic of uh, decades and generations of of pain, of anguish, unheard. The Twin Cities tinderbox set ablaze Monday by this devastating scene. I can breathe. Now, new cell phone video, first obtained by NBC News, shows Chauvin and two other officers pinning Floyd to the ground. He ultimately died. We're also now learning Chauvin and Floyd used to work security at the same local nightclub, according to the owner. We were all working on the same team in that sense, and it's horrible to think that at this point um, that Chauvin would take the life of anyone that was associated with our nightclub. Thursday night, police say more than 170 Minneapolis businesses were looted, damaged, or destroyed. Protests also erupted in Colorado, New York, Tennessee, Kentucky, Arizona, and Ohio. It is so stressful at times just to be black in America. I still tense up because I don't know if this is the day. And it's real. 
It's not made up. This is real. This morning, the nation shocked at another arrest. CNN's own Omar Jimenez arrested live on air. Do you mind telling me why I'm under arrest, sir? He and his team were inexplicably arrested this morning. They were held for some 90 minutes. Governor Waltz now strongly denouncing their treatment. I don't care at this point what the circumstance was, why they got arrested. It is wrong. It is unacceptable. And we needed to correct it. Great. Or we could do right here if you can see them. So I want to give you a look at the scene right now. I want to give you a look at the scene right now. Uh, we were here all night as the third precinct went up in flames. Uh, the state patrol is out here again, uh, the same department that arrested Omar Jimenez. They are standing so that nobody uh, can get anywhere near the third precinct. Uh, you will see the building there, Jake. Uh, that has the boards up all the way down, and then you see the target sign. The third precinct is there. You can see the fence bent over, uh, but there are folks gathering again. And let me just give you a view of the folks that are gathering again. Why are they gathering? People say, oh, well, the officer has been uh, arrested and charged. They want to see the other three officers arrested and charged. They do not feel like justice has been served yet. Jake. All right, Sarah Seidner for us in Minneapolis. Thank you so much. Joining me now is former federal prosecutor Laura Coates, former police officer Reddit Hudson, who founded the National Coalition of Law Enforcement Officers for Justice, Reform and Accountability, and of course, CNN political commentator uh, Van Jones. Also joining us, CNN chief medical correspondent Dr. Sanjay Gupta to talk about some of the uh, information we're getting in this uh, new report, this NAR char charging document. Uh, Laura, let me start with you. We're getting a glimpse into the charging document for now, former officer Chauvin, or Chauvin, rather, it says, quote, the defendant, uh, Officer Chauvin, had his knee on Mr. Floyd's neck for eight minutes and 46 seconds in total. Eight minutes, 46 seconds. Two minutes and 53 seconds of this was after Mr. Floyd was non-responsive. So almost three minutes, his neck on his neck after uh, Floyd is non-responsive. Police are trained that this type of restraint with a subject in a prone position is inherently dangerous. So uh, help us understand how that affects the case against him. He's being charged right now, third-degree murder and manslaughter. Well, of course, third-degree murder is about a non-intent-based crime. It's saying that although you did not intend to actually kill somebody, you acted with such a disregard for human life that it was essentially inevitable or at least foreseeable. That's the context of a third-degree non-intent-based murder charge. And why this is relevant here and what you've described here as the amount of time, which is just heartbreaking and repulsive to think that, that amount of time transpired with this officer's knee on this human being's neck, was that that's where the, start, the clock will essentially start. The clock will start from the moment that this person was, if he was resisting arrest at any point in time, if there is any murky area about whether there was any need for an officer to deploy some level of force to repel a force against them. Well, at that moment in time, at the very least at that moment in time, when he was no longer moving, when he essentially was rendered completely submissive and non-responsive, and to have that two and a half more minutes go on, that indicates to you that this may actually be enhanced to an intent-based crime with a further investigation, number one. It'll also show that reckless disregard for human life. And it also shows you about the officer's position of his hand. If you see from a lot of the photographs we're seeing, Jake, the officer had his hands in his pocket, which already alerts you. If you're intending to defend yourself against someone, are your hands in your pocket or are they ready and, and to be able to repel any force against you? Hand in pockets, non-responsive person on the ground, prone position, handcuffed, already tongue begging for air, the clock starts there and really undermines perhaps fatally any claim of self-defense, number one, or any claim that this officer was not fully aware that his actions could kill someone and did. And Sanjay, I want to get your reaction to a quote from the charging a document uh, looking into uh, the medical examination. It says, quote, the autopsy revealed no physical findings that support a diagnosis of traumatic asphyxia or strangulation, Mr. Floyd had underlying health conditions, including coronary artery disease and hypertensive heart disease. The combined effects of Mr. Floyd being restrained by the police, his underlying health conditions, and any potential intoxicants in his system likely contributed to his death. Uh, look, I'm, I'm a layman. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a lawyer. But that seems strange to me to include that in there because um, even if he wasn't the healthiest individual and even if he had... Uh, alcohol or drugs in his system, 
uh, it seems pretty clear that the precipitating event here is that his mm. th- that the officer's knee was on his neck for nine minutes. Why include that other information? I, I think with these autopsies, they're trying to be as complete as sorry, I apologize, my. Uh, trying to be as complete as possible with regard to providing all the all the medical information. They're not sort of designed necessarily uh, to answer all the questions about the circumstances. So oftentimes with these autopsies, they also say uh, we we want to have uh, you put it in the context of of the situation. You've got to put these things together. I, I don't see that paragraph as being incongruous with itself. Uh, they may not have found a specific anatomical thing that uh, suggested. A strangulation, that doesn't mean it didn't occur. You add in the context of what actually happened, and I think it becomes pretty clear. But Jake, to your point as well, you start removing some of these mitigating factors. Uh, he had an underlying history of heart disease, yes. His lab results may have shown some intoxicants in his system, um, but it was the precipitating event. Clearly, those two things alone were not likely to lead to his death at that moment in time. And I think that's another thing that uh, you know medical examiners will say. Take what we're giving you, apply it to the to the situation overall. And Reddit, the, the charging document lays out some of the discussions officers uh, were having uh, while George Floyd was pinned down. One officer asks multiple times if they should roll him over. Uh, another checked Floyd for a pulse. What kind of insight do, does that give you into what the other officers who are not currently charged might have been thinking during the situation? They knew he was in distress. There's no other reason for them to ask those questions or raise those kinds of concerns unless clearly they understood through what uh, the victim was saying that he was in deep distress. And it is good today that Derek Chauvin has been charged for the sadistic murder that he committed on camera. The next step is for him to be convicted. Uh, If we want to see things toned down around the country, that's what's required. But those officers clearly understood what was happening to the man, as did Derek Chauvin. And Van, um, many activists today are saying that this one arrest is not enough. Um, what changes now that this one officer has been charged? Is there at least some relief that, that perhaps uh, there will be justice? No, no, uh, nothing's changed. Um, the, the, first of all, I just want to be very clear. Um, I've been doing police misconduct, criminal justice you know, stuff as an attorney and as an advocate for about 25 years. Uh, this particular medical examiner's report reminds me of the 1990s, where there was this thing called sudden in custody death syndrome, sudden in custody death syndrome. Things just got so sudden that the person died. And it was this kind of almost began to feel like a collaboration or collusion between uh, law enforcement and the medical examiners uh, to come up with with you know stuff that kind of watered down the role of the police. Uh, if you're going to say that, uh, you know, if hypertension is going to become an excuse for what happened here, uh, African Americans, including myself, have hypertension at epidemic rates. So you're basically saying uh, you're going to, you know, look the other way. That's the danger. That's the fear that people have when they hear that kind of medical examiner uh, speak. That it's going to be used. The medical examiner, of course, you know, they're just doing their job, but it could be used and it could be abused. And then, you know, I'm in conversation communication with people on the ground there. Just talked to uh, Attorney uh, Crump. Uh, people feel badly about the idea that this is manslaughter and a third degree uh, murder. Uh, it may be the smarter move. It may be easier to prove up. And that may be the right course. But the way that it has landed is a slap in the wrist on the wrist already. The assumption is you're going to plead down from that uh, and that there's not a seriousness about this. Also, the other officers are accessories. If you or I did uh, what, what, what is being described, if we had a, a gang of the four of us uh, went and held somebody down and put the knee on the neck and other people wouldn't help or told other people to go away, we'd be accessories to a crime. And so, no, this is not going to end until all the officers are charged and until there is a sense of, of some real determination. And that's why you're seeing the cry already going up from the black community to let Keith Ellison the attorney general get in this. Uh, he is trusted. He's he's a, a long time, you know, fair person. But he's got ties to the black community. They want uh, the state to step in. They do not trust this medical examiner. There also will be an independent uh, uh, medical examination by the family. They don't trust the medical examiner. They don't trust the DA. Nobody trusts anybody until we see all four of those officers in handcuffs with real charges. 
And, and Sanjay, the, the charging document also says, 